in your own words, then, from the top, what, what the heck is happening here? Well, look, this is just the latest step in a three-year journey. Three years ago, I got contacted by uh, an elderly gentleman who was very angry with me because he had invested £19,000 in Bitcoin code that I had guaranteed that his investment would um, would be absolutely right and he'd make money from it and he'd lost all his money and he was furious with me. Yes. Now, of course, as you will realise, Bitcoin code is not Bitcoin, it's not anything, it's a scam as is Bitcoin trader as is any advert with my face in. And yes. that man wouldn't even let me help him because I was a scammer, according to him. Now, since then... So just just, uh, just to be clear, these people put your face on the adverts, largely face, largely name, because your trust your 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 trust exactly. levels among the British public are off the scale. My name, my face, a guarantee from me, a fact that I'm the one behind the company. So after a year and a half of dealing with, well, we had we thought there were about a hundred. Yes, uh, and the, the initial problem was primarily with Facebook. Facebook, we would report a scam after a week or two, it would get taken down, then the next day they'd launch a new one. Yeah. So it was, it was totally ineffective. Uh, I then took a lawsuit against Facebook for defamation, which is perverse. You know, the fact that vulnerable people losing, I mean, in, in one month alone, scams involving me took over £1.4 million, pounds, according Good to Action Fraud, me and a couple of Dragon's Dads. Yeah. Uh, right, so uh, the fact that the only thing I could sue them for, the only regulation, the only law I could find was defamation was perverse. Yes, of course. Right? Because it so, should be fraud, but it's, it's your reputational damage that was the only C means of legal address that you could identify that i could because yes. interesting i can't even report it to action fraud because i haven't been defrauded i haven't lost any money Good grief yes that makes so, sense but you're right it's a bit surreal it's per first so i um i took a lawsuit against facebook as part of that they revealed to the common select committee that in a year there had actually been literally thousands of ad campaigns on facebook with my face on oh, one mate. of the big problems i had about that was I cut that, you know, the idea that I should report them when I don't see them and yes. Facebook use dark advertising, which means they're targeted. So only the people who got them saw them. We didn't even know adverts they were. Yeah. The, the, the net result after a year of negotiations and the lawsuit with Facebook is I settled in return for them donating three million pounds to set up a new charity citizens advice scam action that's now in place for anyone who's been scammed. And the first unique to the UK scam ads report button on facebook and they have a dedicated team so if you press that and i would urge everybody to engage in social policing if it's obviously a scam if it's me in an advert if it's holly willoughby and diet pills if it's eamon holmes and erectile dysfunction if it's dr hillary and um, a shower that cures your acne all of them are scams yes. report them because together we can you know those of us who recognize scams have to help those who don't yes. but the latest what's what's now happened facebook is probably still nowhere near perfect but now probably the leader of the pack okay i have thanks to you well thank you very much you're very uh, I'm British. let's move on from that <laughs> um, uh, so the, the next stage and i've met with many of the big companies and i'm looking to try and bring something together but this latest splash is google these adverts that have been on the daily mail and the independent and the uh the mirror uh, are Google served adverts? Right. They've got they've got even cleverer because what they do now is to try and get through the fraud the detection software. Sometimes when you click them, they'll send you to a legitimate article or quasi legitimate article on the Express or whatever that's mm. written about me. What they tend to do is they just take my content when I'm on this morning or something, and they write it up and sort of looks like I wrote it, but I didn't. It's just yes. taking the transcript from my telly. But anyway, at least it's the right thing that they're sure. saying. The you have actually said this <laughs> stuff. Exactly. And, and they and they half the time you click it, it goes to that. Half the time it goes to a scam site. Right. And then this week you have the ones about me being dead, which is upsetting. I mean, no, I, I, just, I, I, I just want to pause you there because yeah. you, 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 people probably didn't, didn't hear it. It's not a great phone line. So the latest scam has a, what appears to be a news story claiming that you have passed away. Correct. Now, clearly, I wasn't that upset because I was pretty sure it wasn't true. <laughs> it's a bit of a Mark Twain moment there. <laughs> yeah, and my, my wife, however, yes. saw it and also knew it wasn't true, but came in and was quite upset at the pictures. And I had to get in touch with a lot of my family and distant family before they saw it. And my oh. dad was very upset by the whole thing. We've of had course. grief, substantial grief in our family. I know. And, and it really could do without a picture of of me and an RIP of me yes. uh, in, in on the homepage of Mail Online and on, you know, on the mirror. And, and what's more dangerous about these is often the mirror, especially this ad was on the mirror by Google, but it was on the mirror and the mirror 
is in the past. When you click through these, they take you to a fake either Daily Mirror or BBC site. Yes. Nothing to do with the mirror. We need to clarify. It's not yes. the mirror's fault. It's all fake. So the fact that the ad was on the mirror and then you could click through and go to another mirror page yeah. was even more blurring the line, blurring the distinction. Now, what we need here is a number of things. First of all, James, I mean, I know you're a campaigner too. The, 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 the lack, the lacuna of regulation in this country Advertising Standards Authority was set up to police, you know, fake, you know, soap powder not washing as white as it pretends to. Yes. It wasn't set up to police criminal scammers outside the UK based on a, a worldwide global advertising. Action fraud is hideously under-resourced. It does very little. You should still report it, but it does very little. There is absolutely no regulation of these platforms. Now, I have a strong belief. I accept that if you post on social media, that's a post. And it's a platform, and you take down and report is perfectly legitimate. But when they are being paid exactly. to publish, they are a publisher. And I say to the newspapers who came back and said, look, we're really sorry, this is awful, but you know, it's Google. You choose to put Google on your site. If you're putting a company that services aren't good enough to get rid of people who are targeting vulnerable people in trying to scam them out of their money, which destroys their lives and their mental health and their self-esteem, then get Google off your site. And I say to any advertisers listening, I am not far from going out there and saying no one should trust advertising online because it is a wild west riddled with an epidemic of scams. And if you want your ads to have actual reach and impact, your legit ads, you need to speak to the Googles, the other ad providers, the Facebooks, and say, clean your bloody mess up. You make a very powerful point and with this astonishingly poignant personal perspective as well but i think you recognize as i do that they're not going to do any of this voluntarily are they well, well so when i went in to meet I, I i'm always very careful because it was under chatham house rules a okay. very senior member of the government about this and i said look and this was during the suing facebook i said look i'm suing and what you know you need to do some action and the response i got back was well, if you could carry on with your lawsuit and sue a few others, that would be helpful because we can't really do anything. And I wanted to say, "Bring the dash baloney," or think of some other B words. Yes, but right? I, I appreciate because, that. Because the fact is, Jeez. it's about time that we had either legislative or regulatory change. The online harms white paper that has come out outrageously does not include scams. And what's happened is the Westminster bubble has focused on the real danger to our democracy of fake news, which I would never trivialise and should, would never say should be ignored. But that is an indirect danger. Yes. And it's ignored the direct danger to real people and their lives and their well-being. Because tell me, let me tell you, when you've lost £60,000 in your life savings and you feel stupid, which people do, even though they haven't been stupid, yeah. the, the, the impact on your mental health is horrendous. Of course and it it's is. ignored that. And it's focused on the stuff that affects it and not also the stuff that affects real people. And that has to change. You, you're a good man, Martin. It shines through, you know, that you are more concerned here about the plight of the people that have fallen for these scams than you are about the inconvenience, the irritation and the harm that it causes to you and your family personally. And that's a, it's, it's, it's actually, it's deeply, deeply refreshing. And I'll take something, James. You know, I've, I've spent 20 years. I know. 20 years of my life campaigning to try and help people be more savvy about money and to fight for financial justice and these people <laughs> are, are, are manipulating my reputation to scam vulnerable people and it's absolutely perverse it's deeply upsetting and offensive i tell the story i'm not going to get to being upset before when i talk about this one no. of the grandmother who the grandmother who saw one of these ads with my face on and, be, um, and then put, she, her, she had lost her children's, her grandchildren's parents had, had been lost. Oh, no. So she was the carer for the grand, and she put the money in one of these scams. And her phrase was, because I trusted Martin Lewis. Oh, mate. And she lost the orphaned grandchildren's money. I mean, that is about as extreme as it gets. Isn't it? And for these people to utilize my reputation to do that, it is absolutely sickening and we've done some good stuff this is his advice scam action is now up and running the facebook button's up and running but you know you can only do this we've got to have some regulatory and some legislative change on Absolutely. this it is real and we have an epidemic an action fraud and i'm this is going to go at the police officers who work sure. there who do that action fraud is flaccid there are millions of frauds 
going and, and, and on. And the sense of urgency, the sense of urgency is missing. But that's where your testimony and and your personal connection with the story becomes so powerful. While I have you, while you've been talking, quite a few people have been in touch to say they they get regular emails claiming to be um, uh, from products that yeah, you've yeah. you've endorsed. How, how should people report or deal with that apart from the obvious blocking? That's the most difficult one we've come. This is this is since we started being more effective about you know going after the social media platforms and the yes. advertisers and things and putting them on notice. Anything I don't do ads, you'll know my social media profile has a fake tapping of I don't do ads. Yes, to try and get as much emails have started to become the new one and they're the most difficult you can report them to your internet service provider but the honest truth is the only thing i can do to deal with that is, is come on your program and raise awareness that they're false well you so are me, you know you're welcome here whenever you want for i mean for any, anything you want no we're, we're losing we're losing the phone line i just want to clarify with your with your yeah. um confirmation that martin lewis the money saving expert never signs up to advertise or promote any product whatsoever whether it's a financial services product an investment opportunity or washing up liquid absolutely correct you will also never get an email from me with two exceptions the standard weekly email from my website that does go to millions but that's obvious to recognize yes. and if i know you otherwise <laughs> you will not get an email from me everything else is rolex is fake Right. Fake, scam, dangerous, don't touch, don't sniff, don't smell, don't go near. Take it easy, Martin Lewis. You're, you are, as I say, a force for good.